Welcome to Pigeon Auction. When we think of racing pigeons, we often picture a champion bird soaring through the sky, a blur of motion and instinct. But what if the secret to that champion's success isn't just in its training but in its very DNA? Centuries ago, master breeders in places like Belgium and the Netherlands were already creating legendary strains of pigeons. They didn't have microscopes or DNA sequencers. They relied on a deep, almost mystical understanding of pedigree and performance. Now modern science is proving that their ancient wisdom was right all along. The pigeon is a powerful living model for genetics. In fact, Charles Darwin himself, a pigeon fancier, marveled at their diversity, a diversity so extreme he wondered how they could all be from a single ancestor. The Wild Rock Pigeon Today we're going to pull back the curtain and explore the genetic blueprint of the champion racing pigeon. First let's look at some foundational principles. Many pigeon traits, from the head crest to feather patterns, follow simple rules of inheritance, but some are more complex. For example, with incomplete dominance, a pigeon can be a blend of its parents, like a nearly white bird that isn't fully white. Co-dominance is another pattern where both alleles are fully expressed, giving us beautiful modeled patterns like grizzle. More fascinating still are the complex genetic interactions. Think of a gene as a master switch. Epistasis is when one gene can completely hide the effect of another. For instance, a mutation in the SOX10 gene can make a pigeon red, regardless of the other genes it carries for color. Then there's pleiotropy, where a single gene affects multiple traits. The dominant opal mutation, for example, influences both a pigeon's coloration and its overall vitality. And when it comes to racing, we're not talking about a single gene. Traits like endurance and navigation are polygenic, meaning they're shaped by the combined action of many different genes. But even within this complexity, we've pinpointed some key players. When it comes to speed and endurance, several genes have a measurable impact. First, there's the LDHA gene. Often called the speed gene, it's a key player in a pigeon's metabolism, helping it produce energy during intense flight. While the A allele is statistically more favorable, it's important to remember that many top racers have the BB genotype. This isn't a magic bullet, just one piece of the puzzle. Then we have the DRD4 gene, which is associated with better flight performance, particularly in short and middle distance races. The myostatin gene controls muscle growth, and a specific mutation has been found to be more common in pigeons with higher muscle mass. And finally, the feather keratin gene, or f -care. A mutation in this gene is believed to disrupt feather stability, negatively impacting long-distance flight. The wild-type version known as the TT genotype is much more common in pigeons that excel in races over 500 kilometers. But what about the homing ability? This is the very essence of a racing pigeon. Science has shown that selective breeding has led to a significantly larger hippocampal formation, the part of the brain responsible for spatial memory and navigation, in racing pigeons. We've also identified genes linked to their incredible navigation, like the CRY1 gene, which may be involved in magnetoreception, helping a pigeon use the Earth's magnetic field to find its way home. Hello everybody, this is Frederick from PIPA. Today we're going to do some DNA of the pigeons. And this client, uh, Mr. Etienne Merlin, is here. He brought some pigeons. Ruben is going to show to you how to save the DNA. So to have DNA, we uh, need uh, feathers of the pigeon, we need cells uh, to be able to extract DNA, to be able to be sure uh, father and mother are really the father and mother of this pigeon. Of course, we always have to check the ring number first. So this is a pigeon of 22, so 40, 94, 230. We take the correct label that has to be put on the sampling sachets and then we will take feathers I usually take feathers of the legs you can also um, take from the chest those are very good feathers they are uh, clean, dry uh, you can have a lot of cells from the tops of those feathers in the lab they will extract DNA from those tops of the feathers and then make a DNA profile of the, that DNA and compare that with the DNA profiles that already exist uh, of father and mother 
of uh, pigeons of Etienne in the, in the database. Okay, thank you. The pigeon's appearance is also a testament to its genetics. Feather coloration is controlled by a handful of genes. For example, TERP1 determines the three basic colors, blue-black, ash-red, and brown. SOX10 acts as that epistatic gene we mentioned, overriding the other colors, and SLC45A2 acts as a diluting factor, watering down colors to create lighter shades like ash yellow or just yellow. And what about eye sign, the traditional theory that a pigeon's eye can predict its breeding potential? While there's no direct scientific support for the theory itself, the traditional practice of breeding opposite eye colors together is an incredibly effective way to maintain genetic diversity. Breeding pearl to pearl, for instance, can lead to washed out eyes that don't handle the sun well, a real world consequence of inbreeding. This brings us to breeding itself. The most important rule is to look for long lines of champions in a pigeon's family tree. A pedigree filled with generations of winners is a much safer bet than a one-hit wonder. Breeders often use a mix of two strategies, inbreeding and outcrossing. Inbreeding, which is mating close relatives, is a high-risk gamble used to concentrate desirable genes, but it can also lead to genetic depression and negative traits. Outcrossing, on the other hand, brings in new genetic diversity and often results in hybrid vigor, an increase in health and performance. It's a two-tiered system. Some breeders inbreed to create stock birds to sell, while top racing lofts often outcross to produce consistent high-performing racers. Finally, we must remember that a champion is more than just its genes. Genetics determines a pigeon's potential, but the environment determines how much of that potential is expressed. Proper nutrition is critical. Pigeons use carbohydrates for the first hour of flight, then switch to burning fats for long-distance endurance. Knowing this, breeders strategically time their high-fat feedings. The loft environment is equally vital. A clean, well-ventilated, stress-free home is the single most valuable investment a fancier can make. While we're on the topic of health, it's crucial to distinguish between true genetic health issues and common infectious diseases. Lethal genes like homozygous dominant opal cause embryonic death or a short lifespan. But the vast majority of health problems in a flock are infectious like paramyxovirus or ornithosis which can be managed with good biosecurity and proper care. So what have we learned? A champion pigeon is a mosaic. It's a combination of a solid genetic foundation, a few key genes with a large effect on performance, and a perfect environment. As genomic sequencing becomes more accessible, the art of pigeon breeding will only grow more precise, combining timeless wisdom with data-driven science. The continued legacy of the racing pigeon shows us that the most successful fanciers are those who embrace this holistic approach. They know that a true champion is a product of both superior genetics and an optimal environment. If you found this video helpful, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more insights into the world of pigeon racing.